so it, I, I think the focus has been, of, of what I was trying to say has been lost a little bit. I, like four points I want to go through very quickly. Somebody gives me a theory and, they, and maybe they say, here's the ontology of my theory. So here are some questions we can ask. Uh, is there... That doesn't really work. Try the other one. Um, I'll just say it. So in, I want to focus on, spa, on, on this spatial thing, right? Um, and you can ask, is there, good, question one, is there, in your theory, a fundamental meaning not, not derived from anything else, right? Not emergent, not further explained in terms of the dynamics or whatever. Is there a fundamental low D space? Right, which, as it were, coarse grains to the kind of space Newton thought we were in, and you know, uh, Einstein thought we were in, and so on. Uh, is there a fundamental high D space? Okay. Question. Uh, now, just from these two questions, we have four positions. Right? We have the position, yes, there's this, no, there ain't that. We have the position, no, there ain't this, yes, there's that. We have the position, which some people have only ever presented to argue against it, yes, they're both. Right? There's something, there's a, a low D space with some stuff in it. There's a high D space with some stuff in it, and then there's some laws that connect them, which mostly, I don't think anybody's ever actually honestly defended. People raise it to make fun of it. Uh, or you could say, no, there's not this and, there, and there's not this either, and then I don't know where the hell I am, okay? Now, if uh, my belief is that yes, there's this, and no, there's not this. But if you answer yes to either of these, you then have the following question, what's its geometry, right? What is its geometry? What's its geometrical structure? Now, I just want to make a point here. There's an assumption that people often use when they say, oh, this is relativistic theory. If you believe there's this low D thing, either fundamentally or emergently, it better have, its entire geometry better be given by a Lorentz metric. Right? I think that's a bad idea. Why? Because relativity was developed only to capture theories that were local in Bell's sense. Only theories that could not violate a Bell inequality. Nothing wrong with that. That's all Einstein had. He was never confronted with dealing with violations of Bell's inequality. So why would he come up with a theory well suited to do it? Anyway, you ought to be open-minded about this in the face of violations of Bell's inequality if you believe there's a low D space. This one, what, if you think there's a high, fundamental high D space, what's its geometry? Well, we already had this. People talk about configuration space. I've complained forever. It's not, if it's fundamental, it's not configuration space because configurations, the, the space of configurations is a space of abstract things, right? A configuration is a, a, a collection of locations of objects in a low D space. So if you want to say there's a fundamental high D space, fine, just say it. And part of my problem is that the term wave function realism has been co-opted in some cases to mean high D space fundamentalism. I want to say it, fine, say it, then tell me what's its geometry. And I do want to make this point, which Shelley has made forever. Its geometry should not be uh, R to the 3n, right, as it were. And it was even claimed, well, that's the geometry of a configuration of n points taken out of 3D space. No, it isn't. The actual geometry of that is this thing, n to the R3. That's the set of n points taken out of R3. These are not the same. They have different topologies. Okay? So if you're going to say this... Yeah, yeah, because, because in, if, I take, if I take the set of points... Suppose I just have two points, and I'm saying the set of two points. Now, if I, if I continuously rotate this to that, I get back to where I started. So, the, so, so, it's, so it's not topologically simple. Yeah, no, but this is just points. I said points taken out of, right? And points are indistinguishable in that sense. 
Tell me what it is. Tell me why you believe in it. Tell me how it relates to my experience, stuff like that. So uh, I, I just think that these are questions. I mean, there's, I, I think it gets a little hand wavy if I'm thinking about these questions and some of what we were said. I'm not quite sure how to answer these questions. Two other real quick points. Uh, Simon brought up Newton. And if what, the, if, if what he th thinks the Everettians uh, are doing are, is really parallel to what Newton's doing, that changes my entire understanding of it. And I just want to say this. Newton was not making distinct high ontological hypotheses because programmatically he was trying to, to demonstrate things from the phenomena, right? That's what his job was. What can I demonstrate from the phenomena? And he thought he could demonstrate there was an inverse square force, universal inverse square force. He could not demonstrate from the phenomena what caused it, how it worked. Was it mediated by particles? He thought it was, he didn't think it was action at a distance. He didn't know what it was. And so he said, I, that's the hypothesis I will not bingo, right? I won't mix up my demonstrations with mere conjecture. Now, that's OK if that's what you're doing. But I, I, my understanding was that the Everettians were doing just the opposite. They were making a very definite hypothesis, fundamental physical hypothesis from which everything else was supposed to follow. If they think, no, no, we're just at the beginning and we're doing something and it's kind of, I don't know, approximate and provisional. And that's, that's OK, too. But that wasn't my understanding of it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, what, getting. And I guess the last point I want to make is the one I did make. Getting functions you can define on a low dimensional space that behave in a nice way isn't sufficient, as I, in my understanding, as I said, because you can go back to my example. I, in classical physics, I have, a, I have a donut, I have a torus. The center of mass is perfectly well defined. It's perfectly spatial located. It even behaves in a kind of reasonable way in a certain sense, but there ain't nothing there, right? It just, there's nothing physical there. And what Bell wanted was local, physical things on some space. He was always thinking in terms of this space, right? He was never thinking of local vehicles on a space like this. Um, so that, you know, these are the questions I would like to understand better. When I say understand better, not just tell me yes or no, but where you say yes, then there are details to be filled in. Um, and I think that's an obligation of anybody who wants to take these as really serious uh, proposals for a fundamental ontology. I want you to answer. Because you said that no one takes seriously both. I take seriously. And here you, the whole idea, I, I called person. you that you'll try to attack me. <laughs> and you said that this is not good because it's bell inequalities. And there is no bell inequalities in many words, so you don't have to worry. So we have, we have this. Now, there is no action at a distance. Uh, you said the problematic of uh, fundamentality of three dimensions is this bell inequality. But no bell, bell inequalities. We was trying to make something. In many words, they do not exist. So we do have this. We also have this entanglement which does not allow us just to have n r3. If we have classical particles, we can have this. But because of the entanglement, it's kind of uh, we have to add something, we have add mathematical structure. But the basic one is this one. And to explain entanglement, we need something here. But, but, uh, this you, is a picture. You attributed me something I didn't say at all. I didn't say this, this has Bell inequality. No, no, or no because of Bell inequalities, inequalities, you said you cannot accept that this is the Bell inequality make trouble through this. No, I don't think Bell inequality makes trouble for, for in a single word. In single, no, you don't want a relativity, whatever, and then we have. Wait, wait. We can argue about various things, love, but we can't argue about what I said. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I can, I can imagine a theory like this with a fun, fundamental low-dimensional space, yes. and only that, no. with classical tachyons that are well located that follow trajectories that go outside the light cone and that violate Bell inequality up the wazoo. No problem. So okay. I don't think that from this alone, so, this alone doesn't tell you anything about Bell. But again, Bell, it's not Bell here, it's Everett. 
<laughs> so, and, uh, so we have an Everett. You want to ask what Everett is? Everett is first fundamental three dimensional. All interactions and in three dimensions. This is what makes three dimension inter basic. The fun uh, this, is what, this is why they're fundamental. In addition, we have entanglement. But this entanglement does not happen for macroscopic objects. Uh, so we still have three dimensions for macroscopic objects. And uh, so we have this, uh, and then we have this. Uh, but but uh, for microscopic objects, we have entanglement. And we need more dimension. like to dispel. So my point about uh, Newton and what was going there, I was not alluding to his inductive method, as it were, to infer the inverse square law. I, I wasn't talking about that. I was rather pointing out his uh, neutrality um, on, well, what is substance? That simply need not be solved, was not solved, to get physics going in the way that Newton did. So, so that's the only point I wanted to make there. And, and just something I didn't say, and I should have said it, of course, but I, I guess you know this thing, of course. Um, why, why isn't the picture I was giving, why doesn't that work as a realist account of quantum mechanics, you know, and we don't need Everett? And the answer, of course, is because motions don't stay with interactions when you've got tidal forces and so on and so forth. The thing breaks down. What happens then is you get superpositions, but superpositions are uh, a feature and not a bug of the Everett interpretation. That just isn't branching going on. That was the comment. And, of course, the crucial thing for Everett was to apply to a mechanical machine perform a measurement, that was to close this epistemic circle. Um, and it's, I, I do think it's important. So I, I am then with you there. I think the ontology has to mesh with uh, both be intelligible and present obvious ways to measure. Yeah. And can I just make one good old linguistic comment? <laughs> um, entanglement is a feature, not a bug. Okay. Right. Superposition, I mean, of, of, sure, it's a, it's sure, a linear, sure, sure. No, no, no. I, I, sorry. The superposition. Yeah, of, and, and it's of because entanglement is, entanglement is a feature that, yeah. that we, you know, yeah. there's another sense of wave function realism that I'm a wave function realist, that as I think these quantum states are physically real and they have these entanglement, they have all these resources, that's what the cryptographers are working with. Um, I just think you can be a, a realist in that sense about quantum states without being a realist about a high dimensional physical space on which they are fields, which is what David Albert started with. It's like, oh, I'm a very naive guy. The only way I can picture, right? This is kind of anschaulich to me, right? The only way I can picture a physical thing that corresponds to the wave function is by making a, a, a posit of this very high dimensional space upon which there are fields. And that, I think, is just, no, you, can, you don't have to do that. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I agree. Can I just make a comment on the donut? Because could I just please make a comment on the donut? The point about the, 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 the center of mass degree of freedom, it's not the mass distribution. It's, it's the center of mass wave function. The structure, the donut, is all of the internal degrees of freedom in the bound states. 